What's up, divas? What's up, divas? It's your girl, and you guys already know what day it is, what time it is. It's, of course, Real Talk Wednesday. So, I hope you guys are having an amazing week, fabulous day, whatever you want to call it. Let's just jump right into it. So, today, I decided to go for something totally different, you know, putting up my hair back and put my little half wig on, you see, and kind of made it look like it was mine. Mm hmm. And did my eyeliner a little bit thicker than most, okay? This is like totally different for me. You guys know I don't really do my eyeliner this thick. I'm hoping that both eyes are a match, like a match made in heaven, like a perfect pair. I'm hoping that they do look like this. If they not, then oh well. I don't even have anywhere to go. I've already taken care of my daily chores, meaning I have went ahead to the post office today and did what I had to do, meaning mail off some packages, check my post office box, snag some free cookies from the postal people at the post office because they did tell me to come by today. And I did go to my doctor's appointment. Let me tell you guys, I did mention to you guys last week that I have to go back and get a full hysterectomy. You know, I was not aware that there were so many different techniques of the way you can move one's uterus, okay? And keep the ovaries. But anyway, that's not even the issue. I went, had my ultrasound done, you know, to see where the tumors were at, whatever. And my doctor, he moved to, he didn't move, but he went to another part of Arizona really great doctor. I miss him a lot because the one that they gave me now, mind you, after, you know, I put my clothes back on, first of all, I feel it really an awkward moment when you are laid up on the table with your legs spread open. Even if it's an ultrasound, thank God it was a woman in here, but I still felt kind of awkward, you know, really awkward. So I decided to stay on my phone and I just was in my head like I wish this bitch would hurry the fuck up. Okay. Just hurry up and get the fuck out of me and get away from me. But I still had a very open mind. I was positive. I was in a good place. Now, when it was time to go speak to the new doctor, first of all, he explained to me all these different ways of going about taking one's uterus out and other ways that you can go about removing these fibroid tumors and such and such, okay, without surgery, which seemed really great to me. However, I'm not a doctor, okay, because a bitch, if a bitch was a physician, Y'all wouldn't see me making YouTube videos like that, okay? I probably would make a few here and there, but I'm saying I'm not a fucking physician. I'm not an MD. I'm neither nor not even a nurse practitioner, okay? I ain't shit but April, okay? The YouTuber. When a patient asks you to explain the procedure that you feel is best for her, meaning you want to go in through my belly button and through my motherfucking sides and through my JJ. I want to know what the fuck you need to go through all of this for because you said there was other ways. Did this motherfucker tell me, well, listen, get dressed, um, because I had to see him. After I did the ultrasound, then this doctor, he wanted to check me out to see if my uterus a canal was open enough for just to get the uterus through that way. All right, I had my towel on or whatever you want to call it, a little white sheet. He pushed me over to the side, not literally physically pushed me, but basically told me, bitch, bye. He was like, well, just go ahead and put your clothes on. I'll be right back. So as I did that, I asked him, well, you know, since you feel like this procedure is so good, please explain this to me and what's the difference. Did he tell me? Because I'm not going to go into a full detail with you guys about what the fuck he said. Because I could, I don't know what the fuck he said. But did he say, I know this is what he said. You can Google it. There's all type of answers. You can just Google it. I was like, okay. Because first of all, you're trying to speed the fuck off. Now, mind you, today is Tuesday. My appointment was originally for Monday, okay? These motherfuckers done texted me three times on Sunday, 30 minutes apart each text, reminds me of my motherfucking appointment, and then twice Monday morning, okay, reminds me of my appointment. It was 9 a.m. I'm getting dressed. It's 8.43, and did the motherfucking doctor's office call me talking about they need to reschedule because they rather have a doctor do it versus is a nurse practitioner okay all right whatever now mind you can i come in tuesday what if i had a physical leave the house type of job i'm not about to no i no. you about to see me today but i was like all right fine so now that i'm there you trying to rush the fuck off dr man or whatever the fuck your name is you trying to rush off and push me to the side and tell me to google some shit 
I was like, okay. And he was like, and besides that, the the the, the nurse, she's gonna come in with your paperwork and they'll tell you what it is, and you could just Google it. I was like, all right. Now listen, Mr. White Man. I don't even fuck what color you are, race you are. You ain't about to fucking push me to the side, tell me to Google some shit when you about to cut my insides out and open. You crazy? Are you out your rabbit ass mind? So when the nurse brought the paper back in, you know, she's a black lady, had a little hair braided up. She was real nice to me. She was like, well, here you go. I said, I don't like him. She was like, is everything okay? And I was like, no, I don't like him. Would you like me? To, yeah, I would like for you to get me the office manager. Well, the office manager guy, he came and he was really nice. And I told him everything that went down. And at the end, I was like, and he told me to Google it. He was like, did he really say that? I was like, he said to Google it. I said, I can Google anything all motherfucking day. Okay. That's how I said it. Because at that point I was really irritated. I said, on top of that, he tried to rush his way out of here. I had an appointment with you guys yesterday and you guys inconvenienced me and told me to come in today. And I put it in my calendar and I sat in that waiting room and I waited for you guys. And he don't want to spend no time with me explaining something to me. Cause he want to rush off to what? Play golf or go to lunch. I said, listen, I'm not about to Google anything. Not when you're about to cut me open or cut into me. I'm not about to Google anything. And the manager was very nice. He was like, you're definitely right. I'm going to give you your money back because you paid to come here today, your copay. So I'm going to give you that back. And I was like, I don't need that back. Okay, what I need is a real doctor. He was like, no, I'm going to get you the, the a real doctor, good doctor, one that's a little bit different. And I'm going to give you your copay back because I don't think it's right for you. That's great. Thank you. Give me my copay back and assign me to somebody else. I was, I was like, I was like amazed that you can even tell a patient to Google some shit. He was like, he would be talking to the doctor. He was like, a lot of people like him. Well, a bitch like me don't because I'm sorry. Maybe they like him for different things and maybe they not cut being cut the fuck open, but you ain't about to cut my insides the fuck out and cut my, my outer side and tell me that I could Google some shit. Motherfucker. If I was to Google some shit, I bet you I wouldn't have to be here in the first motherfucking place. Okay. If it was that motherfucking easy, I, maybe I, won't have to be here let me tell y'all something i was so disturbed and i was so through like i couldn't believe that he told me google the procedure all right not a problem i'll google a whole bunch of shit because i will but you're not about to try to push me to the motherfucking side and tell me to google some shit when it's your job to sit here and make me feel a little bit more easier and easy going about the whole procedure and explain it to me in layman's terms don't tell me to motherfucking google some shit because i can google shit all motherfucking day that don't mean i'm gonna come up with the right goddamn answer he was just so impatient and in a rush like i felt like it was so unprofessional i couldn't believe that i was like going through that shit like and then when my phone rang it was my daughter you know i had to decline the call but did he catch an attitude like i seen him roll his motherfucking eyes at the top of his head and breathe heavy like listen dude i don't really give a fuck about your situation and the day you're having we here for me so whatever the fuck you going through today put that shit on the back burner because you at work now and whatever the fuck happened at home with your husband or your motherfucking wife because he seemed a little bit on the fruity side and that's no neither here nor there okay but either way you gonna put that shit and keep that shit at home put it in your motherfucking briefcase lock that shit up and put it in the trunk of your motherfucking car and forget about it because we here dealing with april right now muffins is my lovers okay we not about to sit here and tell me to google some motherfucking shit because i could have said well why while i'm at googling why don't you google who the fuck i am okay because we not about to google some shit you don't work for google bitch and neither do i what the fuck you gonna do is you gonna work for adelante healthcare facility and you gonna explain to me the procedure of what the fuck is gonna go down not tell me to google some shit and somebody will be with me and call me and schedule an appointment nigga is you crazy i was like sitting here like you know what first of all y'all motherfuckers inconvenienced me yesterday okay because who the fuck want to get up and go to the gynecologist and have shit stuck up in them and probed and propped? I don't think there's any woman that wants to go through that. Okay, so you have to basically get yourself ready for that shit physically and mentally. Okay, physically meaning make sure you clean your goddamn pussy and make sure that shit smell real good. Okay, shave your motherfucking hairs and do all of that fucking hygienic shit. Okay, and then two, 
get yourself mentally ready for it, okay? Because don't nobody really like laying up there on a goddamn table with their legs spread wide eagle for somebody to prop and probe inside of them. Now, I not only had to do that once today, okay, with the ultrasound, but then he wanted to fucking mess with me, okay? And did he tell the girl, I'm going to do it manually and was just, just put your legs like, we not about to fuck, okay? Don't tell me how to put my goddamn legs. Dude, what's up with you? I was so fucking like irritated i was just sitting there like this motherfucker really don't know me i'm about to come out of character up in this bitch okay and it's gonna be a real talk situation that he gonna need it's gonna be some story time motherfucking shit or i'm gonna have this motherfucker hemmed up in the corner by his goddamn shirt and tie telling him now google this motherfucker what it feels like to get your ass whooped by a black woman google that shit okay Shh. That was my day for today. That was my morning. And I was really, like, not happy about the situation. So, yes. Okay, ladies. Okay, I just... I had to vent that. And I really had to get that off my chest. Okay? So, other than that, my week has been okay. I'm going to tell y'all what. Groupon is the best place in the world for all kind of great deals. So, did a bitch get a deal for a weight loss center? Okay? Because my favorite pills in the whole wild world, they still work, but they don't work as efficient as they used to. Maybe I should stop drinking because, you know something? Drinking is a nice thing. It relaxes me and I like to do that. However, I feel that and I have noticed that when I stop drinking, meaning drinking alcoholic beverages, I lose a lot of weight and my tummy gets really flat. But when I start drinking again, all hell breaks loose, okay? Meaning the motherfucking girdle don't fit, the pants at the waist don't fit, all hell breaks loose. Buttons start to pop and shit like that. And then I start getting my no neck look back, okay? Yes, no neck look back, all right? Not cool at all. Totally not cool. And I don't, I'm not an alcoholic. Like, I like to have one drink a day, maybe even two, never to get drunk because I really don't find the need to get drunk. I don't think that that shit is cool. And maybe it's what I'm drinking. Like, I don't drink wine. I'm not, like, I like wine, but it makes me so tired. It just makes me very, very sleepy, okay? And maybe I should drink that because then I'd be able to go to sleep at night. You know what I'm saying? But I like to drink vodka, okay? So that's my drink of choice. And I have me a screwdriver once a day, and that's what I like to drink. But I like to drink it flavored vodka. I'm not like one of those that like just distilled straight no flavor vodka because I don't really like the taste of liquor in general. So it has to taste watered down or fruity to me. I just cannot taste it. So that has been enabling my weight gain again. And I'm so pissed off about it. So I'm going to stop drinking once the fuck again. I don't even know why I drink because it doesn't even relax me anymore. It doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't make me tipsy. It doesn't relax me. I don't get drunk because I hate the feeling of getting drunk. And then you coughing up your lungs. Ugh, that's like the worst. So I think it is the fact that I like the taste of the UV raspberry vodka. I think that's what it is. And the lemonade mixed together. That's, I, I think that's what the fuck it is. But, um, yeah, maybe I should just go back to drinking wine. Or maybe I should just drink some motherfucking water and pretend. Either way, I don't smoke weed anymore, okay? Um, I just haven't smoked weed in like two months. And I stopped doing that because if I smoke weed, then I eat. And then I get, I, you know, get the munchies you want to snack. That don't help for anybody who wants to lose weight as well. So either way, I just feel like I'm at a loss for it. So I went ahead on Groupon and in on the West Coast, I've noticed like in Arizona, I have never noticed this like this in New York where I'm from, but you know, I'm from Queens, but I've never noticed it like this in New York. But it seems like once I moved to the West Coast, every bitch over here wants to have their body like well put together well designed okay and that's great i'm all for that shit you know what i'm saying i was at that point in life and then i gained weight back but um it's a lot of people have the fake booties and that's fine too like i'm all for it um the fake titties that's great too i'm all for that shit if a bitch could afford it all i'd get it all the fake teeth i'm cool with that too you know whatever um but they have a lot of places out here that will help you lose weight rapidly so they have these weight loss centers you know what i'm saying they give you the b12 shots and then they give you um um oh my god i just really forgot just that quick um it's on the tip of my tongue um supplements that will um like kind of like crave your eating habit okay 
And what's so bad about it for me is I don't even eat like that. I'll eat like once a day. And and that's probably why a lot of people say that's why I can't lose weight because I don't eat enough. Like who would have thought that if you eat more, you'd lose weight? Like, bitch, I'm going to get fatter. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So I've, I've been buying fruit and trying to eat that. But then, you know, fruit makes my stomach fucked up. And then, I mean, that's great too. I'll lose weight by going to the bathroom. Either way, um, they have a lot of these weight loss places because a lot of people are on that diet kicking or just looking great out here. And that's really great. You know what I'm saying? If you want to look great and all of that good, good, good stuff. I mean, like, who the fuck doesn't want to look great? That might might help you find a man or a woman, whoever, okay, or whatever. Um, so they're 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 not cheap. They're really not cheap. Um, it all depends. So I found a really good one for thirty eight dollars. It was like a ninety eight, one hundred and ninety eight dollar one, and you got a six week six week program where you get B12 shots once a week. And I heard those are really good for your skin and your energy and it kind of like boosts your metabolism, you know what I'm saying, shit like that, depending on what you eat though, as well as they give you the supplements and they come in and they weigh you and they give you ways to lose weight. I'm really hoping that that shit works for me because listen, let me tell you something. This week I'm starting my walk, around, walk back, you know, going back to walking. I really can't probably do the three miles to start off with. Maybe I can, I don't know. I'll start off with a mile and a half, you know, because I've been walking for so long and it being that it got so hot outside a bitch almost passed out on the pavement because of the heat and I felt so fucked up after not being able to walk you know what I'm saying like literally mentally and physically fucked up you know what I'm saying so I'm going back to that and hopefully this will help because I can't do the gym thing I just honestly I can't I tried it twice since we've been living out here three times excuse me and I can't do it I cannot find myself to stay in a gym and be surrounded by a bunch of motherfucking people that want to work out all the time and here they're huffing and puffing and I just don't like to be secluded indoors working out I can't do it I feel like the best thing for me is to be outside walking and I loved it I loved being able to just walk outside and exercise but to be in a gym I just I can't do it. I, I tried three times at Planet Fitness, at the YMCA, and at Lifetime Gym. And Lifetime Gym had so much more to offer, but I just can't. I cannot be trapped indoors doing exercises. And I don't know if it's because I've gotten older and I just don't want to, or is it because I'm like an introvert and I don't like to be around people like that? I don't know if maybe it's the both or the two, or maybe I just like to be outside. I don't know, but I'm so happy that the weather is cooling down and I can go back to walking. God, thank you. Because that is what I miss the most. So that is my week. Um, other than that, you, you guys know I bought a new vlogging camera. So I do have some vlog, a vlog up and I will be posting another one up on my uh, channel. And also I went ahead and I bought a MacBook Pro. Um, last night off of Amazon. You know, I do have an iMac. I get tired of sitting in my room, okay? This is where I sit and I edit my videos at, and I feel like I'm just trapped in this room away from my kids when I could be downstairs, sitting downstairs with them. Even if I'm editing a video, I'm still downstairs and I'm around them to where I can have company and interaction. But being stuck in this room has become a, like, a hindrance on me. Like, I want to be downstairs. My room is hot because it's the hugest room, the ceilings are super high, so one little AC vent is not cooling my room off, so I have my desk fan, my ceiling fan on, my oscillating fan, and I feel trapped in here. And I just really want to be downstairs, and a lot of times I find myself up here trapped and miserable sitting at this desk watching TV from my phone, okay? Or I bring my entire iMac. Like, I'm picking up this entire big-ass iMac, because, and I'm lugging it downstairs, and I'm, I'm just doing the most, and it's like an inconvenience. So, I went ahead, and um, I told you guys, I love Amazon. Amazon is the best. I went ahead and bought me a MacBook Pro yesterday after weeks of researching, weeks and weeks of researching it up, because um, I was going to get an Air, which I realized it wasn't the one for me, and just the MacBook, which wasn't the one. Let me tell you guys. Before you buy anything that's electronic or any type of device, definitely research it. Amazon is the best place, and you don't have to buy a per se brand new Mac. Um, my iMac is brand new. 
and so is my Canon um, that I record with. But the Canon that I just purchased, um, this G7X that I showed you guys, this was a, like a $700 camera. I bought it for or five. So I saved two because it was refurbished on Amazon. But I also bought my MacBook Pro used, okay? MacBooks are the best. Any kind of Mac product is the best uh, product, especially if you buy it used. I mean, they last for a long time. So I'm really excited about that because I, it comes Thursday um, and I can sit downstairs and interact more with my kids. I mean, I do interact with them, but I just be feeling alone, okay? And that might be a reason why I've become so introverted is because I'm always trapped in this goddamn room like R. Kelly, trapped in the motherfucking closet, but not on his specialties, okay? So anyway, other than that, we're going to get into this real talk. I hope you guys um, make sure to check out RPG Show's um, event in October. I think it's the 15th, of, um, but we're having a meet and greet, so their tickets are $30. And I will be there amongst other YouTubers, and I hope you guys come through. Uh, I did say this last week. Um, I'm excited, and I'm, I'm like semi-excited, okay? I just have this, I get very overwhelmed when I'm around a lot of people. Um, and sometimes it just sets in so but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that um, Other than that um, Yeah, that's just about it if you have a real talk that you would like me to um, speak upon Speak upon doesn't that sound like really cute speak upon then definitely send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com put in the subject real talk and please change the names of your candidates Oh, I'm getting really fancy now candidates in the email who is this mama what is my son what is that saying go ahead and change the name of the people that you are talking about in the email other than that I hope you guys have a great week um let me know the new shows that you guys are watching because I have just started watching The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. It's a Hulu original. I really do like it, but it's only one season. So what's a bitch to do after that? So yes, you guys, um, let's get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Yeah. 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 All right, you guys, so here we go. Hey, April, I am so happy you are reading my message. Why, well, thank you. I'll change my name to May and my daughter to August. I am a woman of a certain age, well-seasoned and at times salty as hell. My daughter is in her 30s, so here we go. I raised my family as a single parent in New York, and at times I may have done too much for them, causing grown-ass brats. Well, my daughter and her six kids and husband, who is now locked up, all moved into a small home I offered them to get started with in West Texas. I moved there earlier and married her biological father. Fast forward three years. Her kids are wrecking the little house like bulls in a china shop. Holes in the walls, doors off the hinges, eight broken windows, paint peeling, the yard is messed up, and she stopped paying the rent. The problem is I want my home back. I separated from her father, and I am sleeping on the couch. I have somehow become the babysitter. I love my grandkids, and I desperately want to help, but damn. The cable is now in my name, as is the electric and water. I gave her a 30-day notice, but she didn't even read it. All I see is screaming and fighting in the horizon with her kids as collateral damage. And the big kick in the ass is this. Her dad and I used the home to bond her out of jail. I need her to go to court one more time to sign off on whatever papers they need to sign. Then I can come back home and get my home back. Any advice at this point? If I snap, they will need to bond me out, and I'm running out of homes and money. Not to mention too old to be locked up. Love all your videos, mumsies too. Dang. So, wow. 
So May is well seasoned. Um, her daughter is 30 years old and her daughter has 30 kids. I mean, excuse me, six kids. So May is over. She's probably a little bit older than me. I'm pr pretty sure because she has a daughter who's 30 and she's got six grandkids with this one daughter. Her daughter's husband is locked up and she gave them a starter home. You know, that's what we, we do as parents. We give kids things. We try to help them out as much as possible. And a starter home is always something smaller. That's for anybody, okay? But her daughter, August, has stopped paying the rent. There are holes in the walls. The doors is off the hinges. There's eight broken windows. The water and electricity is in May's name, the mama's name. And she's living there with them, sleeping on the couch because she has separated from her husband. Okay, she has given her a 30-day notice, and the young lady has yet to read it, okay? She has yet to read it. And she'll know what to do, basically. Because she know if she says something, it's going to be all holes barred. It's gonna, probably going to be hell, and all type of shit's going to go down. She just don't want to go to jail. First of all, let me tell you something. If she didn't read that 30 days notice, that's nobody's fault but hers. Okay, honey? Let me tell you that. We as parents do so much for our children, and it, sometimes it feels like they really don't fucking respect that shit. They don't respect it. They don't appreciate it. Now, here's one thing that I can... Um, just like I'm saying, I'm sitting here, and I'm trying to do a video, and I got my eldest son... Facebooking me messages about Pizza Hut. Listen, you got a job. Your girlfriend got two jobs, okay? Y'all could order some Pizza Hut. You ain't about to have me order nothing and pay for nothing. Talking about, do I got some coupons? No, I don't have no motherfucking coupons. But if I did have coupons, I'm still not ordering the shit. Because that money is coming out of my checking account, or my bank account. We're not about to do that, okay? I done just sent a big-ass box to my other son that's there that left me with all kind of foods in it. It's about to, it's on the delivery truck by UPS, and it's being delivered today, meaning Tuesday. When y'all see this, it'll be Wednesday. He done already got his food. You could wait and get something to eat out of that box, but I'm not about to buy nobody no motherfucking Pizza Hut. What the fuck do I look like, Bank of motherfucking America? This is what I'm talking about with the kids. It seems like we try to help them because nobody wants anybody to be starving. Nobody wants anybody to be homeless. Nobody wants to be anybody to be without anything. But here's the kicker. I'm not about to be dishing out money and pizzas for you all the time. Don't dry bag me. Don't motherfucking dry bag me. Two, okay, I already sent pizza there last night for my son that left here because he babysitting for you and y'all didn't even cook nothing or give him anything to eat. So he hungry. So y'all went and ate out and then left him there to starve and then went to bed. And while my son is like, you know what I'm saying? Hungry. So I had to send Domino's over there for my one son who's 19 so cause, so he could get something to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not about to do this. You're not about to dry bag me and you're not about to say, well, oh, I was going to have you pay for it. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's not about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, really? Anyway, um, it's, it, it just, that should just irritate the fuck out of me. Cause he just was like, I was going to have you order if you had a coupon, but I guess not. La la la. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I guess not. Laugh out loud my ass. This is what I'm talking about with kids. You love them and you really don't want to hurt their feelings and you don't want them to go without. But it seems like, you know what? My mother had me go without. Okay. She had me go without. When I was hungry, I didn't get whatever I wanted all the time. I didn't have. I, I couldn't. I couldn't call my mother up and be like, "Listen, could you order me some Pizza Hut or some Domino's or some Chinese food or some Uber me some McDonald's?" I couldn't do none of that. All right. I couldn't do any of that. But it's a shame how they take you for granted. Now, you got this young girl with her six kids living in your motherfucking house, and they are destroying your home, okay? So, and not paying rent, but you're sleeping on the couch at the home with holes in the walls, eight windows broken, hinges off the door, and the cable and the water and electricity, whatever, is in your name. Let me let me tell you something. And she didn't read the 30-day notice. That's nobody's business, and that's nobody's fault but her own. However, the 30-day notice will still continue. This is what you need to do. And I'm sorry to say it, because all she's going to do is destroy your home. And the more she destroys it, the more money is going to come out of your pocket. It's bad enough you ain't getting rent money. And now you're about to sit there and sleep on the motherfucking couch and pay the cable and gas or electricity and water bill and repair the home too listen 
shelters help families out. And you know something, sometimes you have to put them in their place and let them feel where it really hurts. And it's not even hurt, but you know what? Shelters help families out first. Shelters help women and children out way before they, they help out single men. And that's unfortunate to say, but it isn't a good way to say, because I'm pretty sure that your daughter, of a mother of six children, husband who's in jail, can get some help through the state and find her a place to live. Because now she's disrespecting your home and she's living up there rent free, destroying her destroying your home she got these little hellions like you said bulls bulls in the china shop destroying and wrecking your home i'd be damned if that were me let me tell you something i have a motherfucking fit when my grandson knock over anything up in my house you know what i'm saying i traveled from new york to arizona with all of my knickknacks and i know they're not called knickknacks but you understand what i'm saying all of my precious items wrapped and wrapped and wrapped Okay, so a lot of these things I've had for a minute. Not no old China shit, but you know what I'm saying? Statues of Buddhas and shit like that that I pay good money for. When somebody in my house knock them over and it break on the motherfucking floor, a bitch have a fit, okay? I have a fit. My daughter Tati accidentally bumped into the shelf on the hallway and it knocked over one of my Buddhas. She caught it, but the little arm fell off. And I had this thing for like 11 fucking years, okay? Yeah, I put some E6000 glue and glued it back the fuck together, but that's not the point. I don't like nobody destroying none of my shit. None of my motherfucking shit. I will go off on a motherfucker. When I had my son and his his son and his girlfriend staying here from New York, when they, was, they fucking destroyed my goddamn rug, meaning clean the motherfucking rug up and make sure that's that shit is clean okay clean it the fuck up now now my son my my 19 year old is texting me talking about his package just came meaning his food yeah hold so on. i'm happy that his food came he got his little package with his little hygiene products in it and a bunch of food for him okay however you got your daughter up in your house and she got six hellions, okay? And I don't mean to disrespect nobody's kids by calling them hellions or grandkids, but if you're not teaching them no type of manners and they over there destroying shit, they motherfucking hellions, okay? Maybe you need to teach them how to fucking act. Hell yins all right bottom line i get pissed the fuck off if, if people destroy anything of mine's here like i was saying they done came here they done had they my, they my grandson walking around with bowls of cereal with milk okay you're not about to that's what a table is for sit there okay he done broke a couple of my statues and it, and then one of them i realized went missing after they left and went back to new york city okay so then i realized it was broken so y'all hide the shit on me like it's one thing if you break your own shit, but you're not about to come up in my motherfucking vicinities in my area and my dwelling and fuck up my shit, okay? That's one thing I don't have. I, I work hard for whatever the fuck I have, and I am not about to have anybody fucking up my shit. Now, we talking about not statue. We talking about a home. So you got these hellions up in here putting holes up in the motherfucking walls, breaking the goddamn windows, doors coming off the hinges and shit. I'm going to tell you what. Won't be no motherfucking cable up in there, sweetheart. Won't be no goddamn electricity or water. Shuts it all the fuck down. Here's what I would fucking do. Serve her motherfucking ass with a five-day notice. She already had a chance to read the 30-day notice. She didn't bother to read it because she probably thought it was a joke because it was coming from you. But that's okay. It's all good. Now is the time when you get the sheriffs involved and you got five motherfucking days to get the fuck up out of here. You and your little hellions need to find somewhere to stay and go to. It's You know what? Family will do it to you all the time. And I know we all be like, that's my kids, that's my grandkids. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm not about to let anybody come up in my home and aggravate me my motherfucking kids my motherfucking grandkids if it was my mother my father my husband whoever you're not about to come up in my house and aggravate me and tear my shit the fuck apart that's not about to happen do you think that if i was a landlord and i had some tenants i wouldn't give a fuck if they was just friends or whoever the fuck they were tenants regular tenants do you think that i would want them to destroy my home no, it doesn't make it okay for them to destroy your home just because they are blood related to you. Let me tell you something. Those, it's sad, but it's true. It's sad, but it's true. It's sad, but it's true. You know what I'm saying? Family will do it to you all the motherfucking time. Those be the ones 
that will use your fucking black ass up, your black ass, your white ass, your Chinese ass, your Hispanic ass up until you ain't got nothing no more. They feel like it's okay to use you because you are related to them in some type of motherfucking shape or form. Now y'all see why I don't fuck with people. I don't even fuck with my own family because them be the ones. I got cousins that I don't fuck with. I'm like, I'm going to name one for you. Just not Keisha, but Nakia. Now me, Nakia know me and her is not cool like that. We is not cool like that. Okay. We ain't like this. The only one that I'm like this with is my cousin Kenya. Cause she lived up on the 10th floor and I lived on the first floor in the same motherfucking building. Now you got Nakia who lived in the Bronx. Okay. We didn't fuck with her like that. Me and Kenya was like this always together. Now Nakia, she come around whenever. Bitch, don't be fucking leaving me Facebook messages dry bagging, talking about, oh, that wig look cute. Oh, you got any extra wigs? Bitch, you know you don't fuck with me. You don't fucks with me. Okay? You, you never did fuck with me. Never did. You thought I was a little bit simple. Or not even simple, but I was too slow for you, meaning. Because your mama let you run the streets and mine didn't. And things you like to do, I didn't like to do. So she wasn't fucking with me, okay? But we started fucking with each other as we got older, meaning we would converse more. We hung up a few times. She came to my house and stayed over. Not here, but in New York. You know what I'm saying? So, but we didn't fucks with each other like that. So what gives you the right to motherfucking ask me for a wig or two? I don't give a fuck if it was a $12 wig, bitch. Don't ask me for shit because I don't fucks with you, okay? This is what I'm talking about when it comes to family. They will use you up until you don't have nothing else, okay? It doesn't matter if it's your kids or your, your, your brother, your sister, your mother, your daddy, your uncle, your auntie. They will use you up until you allow them to, okay? And it's fucked up that your daughter, who is the mother of six children, knew how hard it was for you to raise them and be a single mother, that she would want to even go ahead and fucking fuck up some shit that you worked hard for in your own home. Let me tell you something. I would take my ass right to the courthouse and get that bitch evicted, okay? Get her evicted. They will drag her into the courthouse and they will serve her with the papers. Since she didn't want to read that 30-day notice from you, have the courts serve her. Have the motherfucking sheriffs serve her. She got five motherfucking days to get out your house. I'll be damned because I, I, I guarantee you this much. Regardless of how much money you have to put into paying for your home to be repaired, meaning if it cost you $300 to get eight windows, walls fixed, and doors back on its hinges, I guarantee you that your daughter is not going to give you the money for it. Not even half of it. And I say this because if she can't even pay you for rent for living there, let alone have any type of utility bill in her name, that she's damn sure not about to help you repair the home that her and her hellions have fucking destroyed. Now, you can either continue to let her live there and destroy your home until, honey, there's nothing left of it, and then you are in debt having to take out a loan to fix the repairs, or you can take your ass to the courthouse and have her evicted and served through the, through the sheriff's office, because then she'll motherfucking read it. You've already gave her the opportunity to read the 30 day notice and she has not yet read it girl please that means she takes you for a motherfucking joke sometimes we have to put our foot down and you know what it sucks and it'd be hurtful it'd be hurtful to us as a parent as a human being as a mother it'd be hurtful because nobody wants to have to do their own flesh and blood their own children that way it'd be hurtful you know what i'm saying but we have to do this just like just now i don't want to tell my eldest son jerron nah i'm not sending you no pizza but you know what i'm going to you know why because last night I sent my son Wuzzle, who's staying with you, pizza, because he was hungry, and he's been sitting there watching your son for you while you go to work, okay? And he doesn't have anything to eat, all right? Y'all didn't see fit to make sure that he has something to eat. Now, you probably found out that I got him some Domino's after y'all went to sleep, but that's that's okay, because I'm not going to feed into this. You got a job, and your girlfriend got two. Y'all can afford Pizza Hut, okay? Or Domino's, or whatever the fuck you want to afford. You guys can afford that, but you're not going to continuously use me. You know, I, sometimes I give in because I would never want to see anybody, not just my kids, but I would never want to see anyone go hungry. However, I'm not motherfucking stupid. 
okay? You're not about to play on my motherfucking intelligence. I'm not Trump and I'm not fucking him and I'm not fucking Mayweather neither, meaning my money is, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it's not for infinity. That shit is, it, it runs the fuck out, okay? My shit runs the motherfucking out. I don't have a fucking ATM between my two booty cheeks. You cannot swipe your card to my, between my cheeks and, and get no funds out of that shit. That's not gonna happen, okay? My run, my money runs thin and I'm pretty sure other people's do too. However, it, sometimes it's hard for me to say no. You're not, I'm not sending you no pizza. No. Oh, okay. I'm fine with that. You know, oh, I'm sorry. My grandson is not going to eat pizza tonight. That's not my problem. I'm pretty sure he's going to eat something though. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, they will use you up until you don't have any. And unfortunately, this is where you're going to have to put your foot down and tell her, no, you're going to have to go I'm sorry, but the marshal or the sheriff is here to remove you and your motherfucking hellions from my premises. It is what it is. It's what's going to have to be done. Because if you don't do it, she's going to continue on disrespecting your home and taking advantage of you and not paying you rent. It's one thing that you guys got a couple of broken windows. Well, eight ain't a couple. But it's one thing that y'all got some broken windows, maybe even a hole or two or some hinges. But bitch, now you're not paying me rent? You're just telling me to kiss your ass in a nice way or not even in a nice way, in a way at all. No, honey. May, this time around, I'm pretty sure she will gather herself. Sometimes we have to you know, tough love, because at the end, I bet you that tough love is going to be what's going to help her out. You know what I'm saying? Because as long as you allow her to stay there, it's not helping her any. So you're going to have to have her, you know, removed from the home. Like I said, shelters do help women and children. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. Ain't no woman going to be homeless on the street with six kids. Okay. She will be fine. And of course you probably going to be talked about by family members, even by her. Okay. But who gives a fuck? Because at the end of the day, are any of those people going to help you repair the home that her and her hellions have destroyed? Now moving on to the next. All right. So this one, she says is going to be a long one. So we're going to get right into it. Hey April, I hope all is well. I love your real talks as well as your wig reviews and dollar hauls. I look forward to your uploads. I would like your advice on how to handle a friend. This will be a long one. So I truly apologize in advance. I have a friend who is always on hard times, especially financially. We are both in our mid late thirties. I am single with no children and steady employment. And on the other hand, she is a single mother of one and has a shaky employment. We have known each other for about 10 years. She and I met at a previous job and became fairly close as co-workers. We have not worked together in years and very rarely see each other in person, mainly due to her situation. We have interesting conversations and can talk on the phone for hours, especially when discussing our love lives or lack thereof. In my opinion, she is a very sweet and funny person and she is also very well spoken and intelligent. The issue is that she cannot seem to hold a steady job or keep a place to stay. She seems to get fired from every job and of course from her viewpoint it is never her own fault since I only hear her side of the story each time it happens I really don't know the real reason why she cannot stay employed she is not a troublemaker but at first impression she doesn't come off as a super friendly or inviting person once you get to know her she is talkative and friendly over the years we have lost touch and then found each other again a few times each time I talk to her over the years her situation never changes she is always on the verge of getting evicted from her apartment staying with the cousin or otherwise floating from one living space to another keep in mind her young child is with her full time she has bad credit so in the past she has thought of elaborate schemes to get into a new apartment or rental by writing false information on the application about her previous rental history then she would ask a friend use their phone number and act as if they were previous landlords whenever the new apartment complex call she has been able to get by with several stunts like this over the years and has been worked at and it has even worked with job applications to get hired the last time we talked she and her daughter were renting a room from someone she found on craigslist and she was about to be put out her child's father has a stable employment at home um and employment and housing and lives in the same city but seems to not provide much support from what she says he gives her money here and there but doesn't give her anything if she finds out he is dating if she is dating someone he will cut her off why she doesn't take him to court for child support i don't know the guy that she dates are the guys that she dates are what you would call non-purpose negroes remember i told y'all that shit before they usually don't have a job or car and sometimes have their hand out asking for help from her 
She has only one living parent who refuses to help her at all and no other close family relatives that she has that she hasn't fallen out with. I have given her a few dollars here and there for gas or whatnot, but I am not in a position to offer her a place to crash or a large loan. Financially, I'm able to pay rent bills on time and can afford new clothes and nights out like the average person. I'm not balling out of control and I'm not broke either. Long story start, long story short, I feel bad now even talking to her about life at all. I almost dread calling her or seeing her name on the caller ID. I know it's going to be a long, sad story about the struggle over the last week and even the possibility of, can I borrow $20? She asked how I'm doing and of course I feel bad telling her that things are okay and that I've just been working or cleaning my apartment or going out to eat, going on dates, etc. because I know she cannot do these normal things. My other friends think she is a scam artist, but I try to see her as a good person who can get out of a bad situation, but who can't get out of a bad situation. All I could really do is pray for her, but do you think that it is worth trying to keep her as a friend? At this point, I don't even know what to say to her when we talk. I used to tell her to try to use the secret and I used to tell her to try to use the secret I don't know what that is and think positive and try to place herself around more positive people. I have tried to suggest going to a women's shelter or some other public assistance, but those ideas don't seem appealing to her. She has just job hopped so much that running out of place to work in the area and she doesn't want to just take any job. It seems that she has burned so many bridges that she doesn't know a lot of people and doesn't have a real support system at all anymore. I know she needs someone to vent to, but it's hard to talk to someone who can only focus on the negative. Her life seems to be all about day survival and I don't know how she can go and go through um, and get... get and I don't know how she can get out of that cycle. At this point, I don't know what to tell her since I am not, I do not know how to say that lady's name. Oh my God. You know the black lady that's Oprah Winfrey friend. She, she be giving advice with the short hair. Oh my God. I cannot say her name, but she said, I'm not her and I cannot fix her life. Laugh out loud. Any ideas? Wow. Okay. So did she change the names? She didn't change the name. That's okay though, because we're going to call her Faith and we're going to call her friend Nene. So basically, Nene and Faith have been friends for quite a while. They met each other at work. They're both in their mid-30s. However, Nene has a child, and she just can't seem to keep a job. She can't seem to keep a place to stay. She can't seem to keep friends around her. And Faith is the one who has got herself together. She doesn't have any children, but she has a good, steady income. She pays her bills. She's able to buy herself things and necessities that she needs, and she's able to go out. However, Nene is total opposite. She always needs a handout. She's always scheming and scamming of how to get into a apartment she's constantly getting evicted and she needs to know basically what to do about her listen let me tell you something nobody likes to be around somebody that's negative okay I can't bear to be around someone that's constantly negative or can't help themselves when you have children it's very it's very very important to try to keep yourself afloat and keep on your feet especially keep a job an apartment you don't have to live the elaborate lifestyle you don't have to be balling okay out of control you don't have to be broke neither but you can make ends meet okay here's the thing like she said she has already told her about going to the women's shelter and getting help from the public or you know from the state but I guess Nene's too good for that because if she would have done that, maybe she would have been on her feet by now. Let me tell you something, ladies. I have had help from women's shelters. I have had help from the system. And let me tell you something. If you are able to get yourself together, then use it to your advantage and get yourself together. Get yourself a good job. Women's shelters help you find good employment. They help you find a nice place to live. They help you find education. They help you get on your feet so you don't have to find yourself back in a situation. However, if you don't want to perfect your life and you don't want to better yourself and your living situation and the environment around you, then you're not going to become of anything thing but a situation unfortunately you know what I'm saying like it's one thing to be somebody's friend but me personally if you constantly got your hand out and you need some help with something I'm gonna try to back off of you because listen if I need my shit the fuck back I'm gonna need it back when I'm gonna need it back okay 
I can't be around somebody that always is negative. Okay. That's probably why a lot of times I cut myself off from the world because I can't be bothered with a lot of build bullshit and a lot of negativity. And a lot of times what I do is I just cut myself off from everybody and I don't deal with them because I don't want to hear everybody else's bullshit all the time. It's bad enough. I got my own bullshit. Okay. And it's bad enough. I worked so hard for where I've come from to better myself and for my children. And here it is, you got this woman, Nene, who's really not trying to do anything for herself. She's job hopping. She is home hopping. She's just hopping from dick to dick and apartment to apartment. And, and she has a kid. It's not cool. What is she going to do when her kid gets old enough and is like, hmm. Now you rent in a room from somebody that you done rented a room from that you found on Craigslist and you're about to get evicted from that. I know living in New York, it may be expensive, but you, you now you rent in a room and you getting evicted from that. This is where if you have come to have to rent a room, then that means you are at the lowest of the low and you need to now get real help and stability for your child. Okay. It's one thing I, me personally, I hate motherfucking moving. I don't like to move. Okay. When I find somewhere that I like, I stay there because I hate packing shit up. One thing to pack shit up. Okay. For just yourself, but to pack shit up for you and your child constantly over and over and over and over. Okay. That's just doing the most. Okay doing the most. And don't you think your child will want to have a stable life? It's not fair for Nene's child, but Faith, it's not fair for you. I totally understand that you don't want to constantly keep hearing her bullshit when she answers the phone, but you know something? As a friend, maybe you need to be tough love friend now. Just like I said about the young lady and her daughter, now this is where you need to be a tough love friend. You know, we want to we want to comfort everybody. We want to make sure everybody's woos and tears are okay. We want to make sure that people are okay. We want to comfort them. However, you can't constantly comfort somebody that don't want to work for themselves and don't want to better themselves. You know what I'm saying? You can't constantly keep crying on my motherfucking shoulder if you're not trying to make this better for you and yourself. Like, it doesn't work like that. If she's not trying to make her life better for her and her child, then what the fuck are you supposed to do? You don't have room at your home for her to crash and you can't constantly keep loaning her money that you're never going to get the fuck back. Because if you was going to get it back, that means that she had a good job and she had somewhere to stay. If that bitch can't pay for a room to rent, that means you're not getting that $20 back that you'd have fucking loaned her on several occasions. So therefore, it is time for your black ass to let her know what time it is. Yeah, yeah, maybe she'll probably think like, who are you to say what you're saying because you have no child? And a lot of people try to throw the child card like, well, you don't know how hard it is because I have a kid. I wish a bitch would say that. I, you know what? I've heard that many a times. Okay. I've heard that from many people. I never forget this one girl said to me, well, you don't know how hard it is. I got two kids. I was like, you damn right. I don't know how hard it is for you to have two kids because I have five, okay? I've heard that. I could not believe that this girl who knew that I had five kids had the audacity to say to me, you don't know how hard it is. I got two kids. And I, and I, you know what? You, I don't because my fucking struggle is three times worse than your motherfucking struggle. I got five of these motherfuckers, okay? You only got two, bitch. Where you, be, where you at, all right? However, my struggle may not be as hard as yours because I'm doing something to better myself. Just because we are struggling and we got a downfall don't mean we got to constantly be down, okay? However, if you constantly let that same person cry on your shoulder and woo, 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 life is a struggle. I'm just getting by. I'm just getting by. Then they going to constantly be like, woo, woo. Woo -woo. I'm just getting by. I'm getting by. And also that negative shit that you keep hearing from that same person, that shit gets tiring and old. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. This is what the fuck I would do. Me personally, I'm not going to answer her phone calls no more. And she'll get that shit after a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were friends and we will still be friends, but I'm not trying to hear your fucking cries and woo woos and sob stories all the time. So what you going to need to do, my boo? When you see her on that call ID, you're going to have to stop answering, okay? I'm not saying do this with everybody. This is not what the fuck I do to people that I don't want to talk to. But if her negative shit constantly keep coming at you and you don't want to hear about that shit, you're going to have to not answer. I guarantee you, maybe after the sixth motherfucking time that she done called you, she'll get the picture and she won't continuously call you back. Sometimes we have to put our foot down. And I know you may want to help, but sometimes, you know what, her negative shit rub off and it brings negative 
energy around you. I'm all for the positive shit because when somebody come around me with bad vibes and negative vibes, that shit wear off on me. And then it make me feel some type of way and fucks up my feng shui and my vibe for the day. And I don't need nobody's negative shit fucking up my good energy. You know what I'm saying? Because it be little days when I have fucking negative shit around me. That's why I keep to myself and I try to stay happy because life is too short to be hindering myself with negative shit. So what you're going to need to do, Faith, is stop answering her calls. This is what you do first. You answer her call and you listen to her bullshit about, oh, woo, woo, woo. And this is what you tell her. Listen, I understand that you're going through something and we all do. But what you're going to need to do is better yourself for your child because your daughter or your son is going to need you. You're going to need to find yourself a good job and keep that job. Give her a strong, willful, positive conversation and that's it. And if she calls back the second time and she gives you another woo, 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 cut her off and be like, you know what? I got something I have to go do. And then end the conversation with that. And then don't answer her phone calls no more. Give her that opportunity and give her that talk. Be strong-willed and tough love and tell her what she needs to do. And then when she calls back, maybe the next day or maybe a couple days later, and she comes back at you, if she has negativity again, you know what? Cut her off and be like, you know what? I don't mean to cut you short, but I have something I have to go do. And then when she calls you back for the third time, bitch, don't motherfucking answer because you've already given her that conversation. You've already given her that talk. You've already given her that spill of how to handle life. And if she can't deal with that, then there's nothing the fuck you can do for her, okay? She didn't already burned her bridges. She's already been evicted several times. I'd be damned if you keep kicking me the fuck out because then I think I would get it by then. That's what the fuck you need to do because negative and negative, negative and positive is just going to be negative, okay? Let your positivity shine off on her and if she can't get it, then bitch, don't answer her calls no more. I guarantee you that bitch won't call no more. So on that note, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this real talk. I got to go get Mumsy from school. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Leave all your comments below, and I will see you soon.